Um, so yeah, so yeah, so now I'm going to talk about um, PHP Bench. Um, yeah, what what it is, um, how to use it, and um, especially what what's coming up in PHP Bench 1.0. Um, so I started this project in 2015, and I worked on it really hard for about I guess a year, and then and then I stopped working on it. <laughs> Um, for about six years, I think, or something like this. And in that time, um, it actually sort of got more, um, it got used quite a lot. Um, so I picked it back up in September as represented by the first talk that I gave in September here um, in, 20, in, in September. Um, and then I did another one and now I'm on the third one. And I think, uh, yeah, PHP Bench 1.0, it's, Hesitant to say almost there, but it's it's sort of <laughs> it's definitely getting there. Um, so about me, um, yeah, I'm maybe a PHP developer um, almost exclusively for for about thirteen years or something like that. Um, I also, in addition to PHP Bench, I, I maintain something called Factor, which is basically a language server um, for yeah, for VS Code or for Vim or for, for Emacs um, to provide you with like uh, completion and refactoring and things like that. Um, I ride my bike quite a lot. Um, I, um, I often do like a long um, cycle rides. And in fact, that's when I wrote PHP Bench, I was cycling to, to Istanbul or to, to Ankara. Um, I was worked, I worked on the Sulu CMF, um, if you've heard of that, um, they're based in Austria. I work now for Invika. Um, yeah, and I also did some work on the Symphony CMF um, many, many years ago. Um, so, okay, so PHP Bench, what is it? Um, so it's a benchmarking framework. It's kind of anal analogous to, to PHP unit, um, but for measuring performance in your code. So I think many of you might recognize the, the sort of pattern in, in this piece of code. Um, if you need to measure something in PHP, and it's, it's a very small thing, you know, you need to look for a, a regression in like a, some some algorithm or something. You might have done something like this. Um, so basically, you 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 get the, the the number of microseconds at this this point in time, and you assign it to start, and then and then you iterate um, and do your thing like a hundred thousand times, a million times, whatever. Um, because what you're doing is taking probably less than a microsecond, right? So the more times you do it um, sequentially in a loop, um, yeah, the, the sort of more meaningful that that result's going to be. And then you you get the elapsed time, and then you divide the um, yeah the, the total time by the number of um, iterations that you did, and then you get an average. And then you typically run that multiple times to see if yeah to see roughly where the where the numbers are sort of ending up um and this is essentially what what php bench does but it's adding a lot more um and it's sort of formalizing um this process and it gives you a framework and and a way to to sort of analyze the results um yeah so that's that's the logo um, yeah, so I started in 2015, um, it's about 800 commits, 600, okay, this was a few years ago, 600 stars on GitHub. Um, it was used by Doctrine RM, is used by Doctrine RM, and this Zen framework called Laminus, is it Laminus? Is that what it's called now? Um, I'm not sure. Um, and yeah, Blackfire recommended in the documentation. Um, in 2021, there's more, like 1.2, yeah, 1,000 stars. Um, almost 900,000 in stores, and it's used by yeah various various projects. Um, and when I was working on this in September, I installed Parsica um, because I wanted to to, to make a yeah an assertion language. And yeah, I was, I was surprised to see that Parsica is also using PHP Bench. Um, so over time, it's it's been installed more and more. Um, so this is from 2015 to 2020. Um, and then, yeah, 
towards the end of 2020, it just started going up quite a lot. Um, and now it's just started to dip down a little bit. So maybe somebody turned off their CI. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, it's the, the, the use is sort of grown. Yeah. Sort of almost exponentially um, recently. I'm not quite sure why. Um, so yeah, so in September, I decided to, to actually do some more work on it for nothing else that I was actually using it myself. So when I wrote this tool, um, I sort of wrote it and then I had a use case for it when I wrote it, but um, <laughs> then my use, my use case became writing PHP bench. Um, and after I sort of finished that, I never used it. I really didn't use it at all. And it's only recently that, um, with factor, you know, I've, I've been more concerned with writing sort of performance tests. Um, so I've, that's why I've, I've picked it up again. Um, yeah. And then I was able to see like some of the shortcomings it had, and I hope I've addressed some of those. So anyway, going back to zero, um, features at a glance. So you've got PHP unit like testing. So I, I expect everybody's familiar with PHP unit tests are run in isolation. Um, so when you, when you run your, your benchmark, um, and for each iteration and a new process is, um, spawned and the, the measurement takes place in that, in that process, which means that, yeah, if you like PHP bench won't somehow contaminate your code and it won't affect what dependencies you can have in the code that you're, you're benchmarking. Um, yeah, you've got reports and some statistical analysis. Um, you've got some nice progress output. We'll see that later. You've got a feature to, to try and ensure that the results are more stable, um, which we'll cover later. Um, yeah, and you can store and compare results um, and yeah, detect regressions. And, and now in 1.0, you can also add assertions um, and potentially even put it in a, in a CI pipeline. Um, so going back again, this what, what is a benchmark in PHP Bench? So this is a valid benchmark. Um, so this is a benchmark in PHP Bench is just a class, much like your, your PHP unit test case, um, except unlike the PHP unit test, you don't extend anything. So your benchmark has no dependencies at all on PHP Bench. Um, if you remember, it's running a new process and yeah, there are no dependencies there. Um, there are some conventions um, by default, so that um, again, like PHP unit, the test, the bench cases, if you like, um, have to end in bench um, for the for the finder to, to find them. And the uh, subjects, um, as I call them, um, have to be prefixed with bench. So that's the equivalent of the test prefix in, in, in PHP unit. And you can, um, again, like PHP units, you can, you can specify at benchmark as an annotation and you can name it however you want, but by default, it uses the, the prefix. Um, so then we've got the, the, the subject itself and we say, um, yeah, within, within the subject is the, within the method of the thing is the thing we want to benchmark. Um, and the annotations allow you to sort of configure what, what's going on there. Um, so in PHP bench, the, the terminology may be a bit strange. Um, so iterations refers to the number of samples. So each iteration will result in some numbers. Um, and those numbers in, yeah, include the, the, the net time that it took to, in microseconds to run the iteration, um, the memory usage, and, and maybe some other things, um, depending on what, what you're using. Um, and then revolutions. Um, so we've got revolutions 50. This actually relates to this number, this 100,000 number. So within the, um, the, the, the spawned process, it's basically doing exactly this. So it's just running the code so many times and getting the, the total time and then yeah, taking some other um, information as well. Um, so yeah, you can you can obviously have lots of different. You can move the annotations to the to the to the class level. You can even um, yeah extend an abstract class if you like, and add the annotations there. Um, in in one point zero, you can also use uh, PHP eight attributes. Um, um, so yeah, so some of the different annotations you can have. So you can have iterations. Um, you can also specify a sequence. 
So you can say run it on 10 iterations, 20 iterations, and then 50 iterations. Um, yeah, the same with the revolutions, the warm up. The warm up will execute the test so many times before taking any samples. Uh, sleep will sort of delay the time between um, iterations, between samples. And you can do yeah, various things with specifying the output time and the, the output mode, whether it displays the throughput or just just with the, yeah, the normal time. Um, and as with all other test frameworks, you can specify things that run before the subject, after the subject, before the class, after the class, and you can group things. And there's probably 10 other annotations, which I won't talk about. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, this is how it works. This is kind of the template that it's using, um, which is pretty much exactly the same as the, the first example we saw. Um, so it just instantiates your benchmarking class and returns a serialized um, string to, to PHP Bench, who, which launched the process. Um, you can sort of implement different um, templates for this. So you can, you can collect anything that you like, really, and just return a serialized string and map it to um, a result object in, in PHP Bench, and you can use that information somehow. Um, so what, what do you gain? So when you run some benchmarks, basically um, PHP Bench can yeah, report the progress as you go. Um, and then it can produce a report and there are a number of different reports and these reports have changed in 1.0 as well. They've become a bit better, I'd say. Um, and the, the, the sort of question we want to ask is, you know, what do these numbers mean? What, you know, so we can see, you can run that and it's kind of useful. This is a, an iteration by iteration view of what happens. So, and as I said, each of these represents a separate process which is being launched. Um, and then you've got the, yeah, the results. And you can, this is kind of useful. You can look at it and you see, well, we've got a lot of sixes. We've got some sevens. But, you know, it's probably about six and a half, something like that. Um, but of course, we can sort of do some maths and we can, we can make this a bit better. Um, and just to see what that looks like as a histogram. Is that a hist That's not a histogram. We get to the histograms in a minute. Um, this is a histogram. So with the histogram, we can see, um, if you don't know what a histogram is, um, it's basically um, counting the number of times that a sample, like um, the amount of time falls within a certain bracket within the bucket. Um, so if we've got five here, you probably can't see that, it's very small. Um, the one on the left is five and it's about 150 to 160. Um, so milliseconds, I'm not sure if that relates directly to this, um, probably not. So it's 150 to 160 milliseconds and there's five of those. And then we've got some others and it sort of ducks down like that. But then suddenly we've got these outliers, which are, which are very bad. Um, well, that, that's subjective, I guess, but um, they're not good um, because yeah, they, they, they're anomalies. Um, and that means that the, the sample set's not, not very good. Um, so one of the problems that PHP Bench is trying to solve is um, how to, to get rid of these anomalies and sort of make your um, measurements or get, yeah, get an accurate measurement of, of how fast your, your code is. Um, so the, the two basic um, useful, I guess, one's more useful than the other um, metrics are the mean and the mode. Um, so the mean is what everybody I expect is familiar with. It's the average. It's the sum of all of the, the times um, divided by the number of times. So on the histogram, it looks like this. So on the left, again, we've got like, yeah, five of those and we've got one of these, but the mean is sort of shifted to the right, um, which isn't really desirable. So we, we can be pretty sure that these outliers are irrelevant. You know, they're, they're just anomalies, um, maybe the, I don't know, the, the, the kernel was doing some very expensive task at that moment, um, and then it created, it slowed down this process. Um, so the mean is shifted to the right. Um, so it's not really the best indicator, um, which is why we've got the mode. Um, now, I won't really go into details of how this works, um, but basically what we do is we take the histogram 
and we plot um, a curve over it. And the point that's highest on the curve is the mode. Um, and you can see that that's always going to be a better predictor than the mean because it's sort of weighted up here. Um, and it's, it will, yeah, um, it provides a more accurate um, idea of what, what, what the real value could be. Um, so how it works is, yeah, I'm not a statistician, I'm a PHP developer. Um, but for every, every time sample, we're basically putting over a normal distribution, and then we sum the area, the overlapping areas, and then we get this, um, this curve that fits over. Um, so yeah, the, the mode, so yeah, it's too long, didn't read. The mode is a thing that you should look at um, in, in the results. It's the best indicator for, for what, the, what the time is. Um, so the other thing is stability. Um, so obviously, if we've got sort of a sample that comes in 100, 150 milliseconds and then one that's at 350 milliseconds or whatever, a minute, um, we don't care about that one that took a minute. Um, so, and this means that the, that the sample set is unstable. Um, and PHP Bench provides a way of um, indicating the stability of the sample set. Um, and yeah, there's a couple of ways to do it. You get, you get the standard deviation as a, as a number, um, but this, yeah, it's, it's okay, but it will change um, the, the value will change based, obviously based on what you're benchmarking. So if your benchmark is something that takes a minute, then that's, that standard deviation is going to change. So if you just want to see how stable your thing is, um, the standard deviation isn't, um, yeah, an easy metric to, to work with. So instead there's the relative standard deviation, which is represented as R ST dev. Um, and this is a, a percentage value and it's, it's sort of stable. So 18 means, you know, not that great. And three means, yeah, that's okay. Um, no matter what benchmark you're doing. So, you know, anything that's under sort of five, um, is good and anything that's over 10 is bad. Um, so yeah, that, that's a very good indicator about how stable your, your set is. And just to have a look at, at the effect or what this reflects, um, so if we've got some samples and they're coming in at, yeah, we've got a few at 130, that's on the left. And then we've got one at about 230. So there's sort of an interval or there's a, uh, a range of times really of, you know, like hundred uh, milliseconds, um, which is quite a large, um, yeah, margin of error. Um, and this is with, and PH mentioned report, this is 14%. Um, if we get it down to 2.92, and you can also see that yeah, the the mean is is quite way off there. Um, yeah, so if we, if the re relative standard deviation is 2.92, um, then it's reduced drastically. So the range here goes from about 130 to 145. So it's really a much more condensed um, set of samples. So you, you can have more confidence if the standard deviation is 2.92 um, and yeah all the way down to sort of 0.79 percent um, and in this case you really do start to see a bell curve um, it's everything so packed together um, and the mean and the mode are pretty much the same thing in this case um, yeah so takeaway is that yeah look at the the rst dev um, because it tells you how stable um, your, your results are. Um, so after some do a demonstration and I'm just gonna show you how, how it all works. Um, but first of all, what's new in 1.0? So first of all, things have been removed. So when I wrote PHP Bench, um, I was really enthusiastic about adding features. Um, and I added like a, a, a debug extension where you could store stuff in the database. I even wrote like a JSON query language that you could query um, benchmarks for in your, in your database, um, which was a bit weird. Um, yeah, there, there was stuff to archive stuff to databases to unarchive it and export it to XML. Um, 
yeah, and all this sort of thing. And there were some XML based reports using XSLT, um, which were quite nice, but the implementation was, was horrible and um, yeah, complicated. So some things have been removed was, um, yeah, I just don't want to maintain them or refactor to them. Um, probably the biggest change in 1.0 is the expression language. So this started off in, in September as a very sort of, well, I started off a couple of years ago, I think actually, I sort of an expression language, which wasn't really um, parser based, but just used um, yeah, parameters and assertions. Um, but yeah, since September, this is the expression language has sort of emerged. Um, so it started off as just being used for assertions um, and then it sort of evolved. So now it's using like a, a proper parser and an AST um, and it's used in yeah, assertions firstly, um, but also in the reports. Um, and you can pretty much do anything you like with this and it provides some nice um, sort of features that are specific to, to, to this use case. Um, like specifying tolerance and um, working with time units and things like that. Um, and we'll see a bit of that later. Um, yeah, and regression testing. So this is probably the biggest problem I had with, with PSU Bench is that um, it didn't really protect you from your code getting worse. Um, so that's, that's one of the things that's changed in 1.0. Um, you can reference a previous um, benchmarking run. Um, and then the, you, can, you can see the output. Um, so it, again, we'll see this again later, but in the, in the progress, you see that um, when, you, when you use a reference, um, you see the side-by-side -side values, the percent difference. The, the percent difference, this 2.392204, whatever number percent difference that actually changes color. Um, it's using true color. Um, so it goes from a gradient from green to red, depending on um, how bad or good it is. Um, and then, yeah, and then you have the assertions and you can see the assertions, the ticks, the crosses, um, and then you've got the, the assertion results. Um, of course, with PHP 8 is a thing um, and yeah, PHP Bench is supporting the PHP 8 attributes. Um, and that's that's basically what's new. And there's also some, some things just to make developing uh, a bit easier. So you can use, um, so debugging benchmarks has been a bit of a nightmare because they're executed in a different process. So if you want to, I don't know, var dump something or um, do anything with your with the current process of PHP Bench is running, you couldn't really do that. It was quite difficult to see what was going on. Um, so now um, you can specify a local executor and that will basically not spawn a process. So it will run everything within the same process. Um, you can keep and inspect the temporary files that PHP Bench creates, and you can also yeah, use the VVV verbosity. And you can see the commands that um, PSG Bench is using to, to spawn the iterations and things like that. Okay. Um, then I will do a demonstration. If anyone's got any questions or wants to interrupt um, with your questions, uh, feel free. Um, and I will try. And I guess, can you see the screen? Yep. Okay, nice. Um, don't know why I've got PHP Bench. Uh, PHP stands up there, doesn't matter. Okay, um, so I'm going to show you how to use PHP Bench from scratch, I guess. Um, well, not quite from scratch. So I've, I've included a, a composer file. Um, if you want to use the alpha version of PHP Bench, hopefully you won't have to because it's going to be released in a month or two. Um, you can you can include PHP Bench um, at Alpha, um, and of course you probably want to do this in required dev, and not in require. Um, okay, so how do we start? So maybe we need something to benchmark. So I'm going to create a class called Time Consumer. I hope. 
Um, and it's going to have a method called consume. And guess what? It's going to consume time. So we're going to say use sleep. I don't know, 1000. And then we're really concerned about how fast this runs. So we're going to write a benchmark. Um, so when I'm writing benchmarks, to start with, I used to put them in a folder like this, like benchmarks and then stuff. Um, but later, um, I kind of realized they were tests. Um, so now I tend to put uh, benchmarks in the tests folder alongside things like yeah, unit or whatever functional integration tests that you might have. So it just becomes another type of test. Um, so like I said before, if you want to create a benchmark, it's very simple. You just create a class and it has to be suffix with, with bench. Um, it has no dependencies. And by convention, you just need to say bench consume like this. Um, and I guess we can just instantiate the consumer here and say consume. Okay. So, misnaming so consume great so that that's that's it that's the benchmark um can we run it let's try so as with other tools um you can install ph bench as a file by the way there's a file that's automatically deployed um when when there's a release um so let's try it so ph bench run and it says you must either specify or configure a path okay so I guess specify means we can give it a path like this. And okay, and there's, of course there's an error. It says demo time consumer not found. Which is strange. I think it worked. But, ah, of course it doesn't work. Um, <laughs> It's good that it doesn't work. Um, so yeah, it says that the, the, the file's not found. So remember, this is running in a separate process. Um, it has no idea of the auto loading um, for um, from Composer. Um, so if your tests depend on uh, auto loading or anything else, um, or you need to do some other bootstrapping, you need to use a bootstrap file. And I think you can do this on the command line. I think you can do most everything on the command line. So then we say vendor also load PHP and then it runs. Um, it's very likely you won't want to specify the bootstrap on the command line every time though. So then we have the configuration file. So this is phpbench.json. Um, and yeah, I think the option is bootstrap. So now we shouldn't need to use the, um, the command line option. And we can also specify the, the path or the paths uh, um, to the benchmarks. So if you've got more than one benchmark, this it also accepts uh, an array, at least it is in 1.0. So now we can get rid of the path as well. Okay, so now We've we've got yeah the minimum, I guess um, that we need to, to actually run run stuff. Um, so let's have a look at the report. So we've got a couple of different reports. So the default report is giving you an iteration by iteration view, as we saw earlier. There's only one iteration, um, so let's change that. Again, you can use the command line. I say you can use the command line to do pretty much anything. So now it's going to run a hundred iterations. It's probably a bit much. Um, and then it gives you a hundred um, results, right? Um, let's put that down to 10. Um, and then we can use the aggregate report, which is actually the original PHP bench aggregate report, which I'm removing. Um, the new one will also be called aggregate, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to might use the secret demo feature. Um, so it's um, less information basically so you it's just got the stand relative standard deviation the mode yeah the best and the worst and the memory um and it's removed a lot of the superfluous stuff that's just noise basically um so yeah again we probably don't want to specify the iterations on the command line so we can do that either um 
here or here in the or in an abstract class like i said it doesn't matter um, we can also increase the revolution so the revolutions like i said was basically the number of times um, that the code will be revolved the, that the code will be um, executed within the within the sample um, so if we say it's going to be executed I don't know, 10 times um, and we can delete that, delete, delete that, delete that. Um, and then it didn't actually execute it 10 times, it still says one. Ah, yes. So normally it helps if you annotate the benchmarking class and not the, the, the class of the benchmarking. So, so there we go. So now it's executing those and it does it 10 times. Um, and yeah, with, with 10 iterations. Um, we can also, if, yeah, you might have a problem where you might need to bootstrap the code um, and you don't want to benchmark the time it takes to bootstrap the code. So like, I'd say similar to PHP unit, you can use a setup method, um, but the way we do it in PHP Bench is by, um, yeah, using another annotation saying um, before all subjects execute setup. So then we can have a setup and we can say this time consumer equals new time consumer. Imagine it takes, I don't know, like ages to configure that. And then in the, in the benchmark itself, we can, what's completion not working? That's usually a bad sign. Okay, there it is. Um, yeah, we can execute it without without the overhead of um, without the overhead of the the warm up time. Yeah, so I'm on the wrong version of PHP. Let's switch to eight point naught. See what happens. Still works. That's good. Um, okay, and then. Again, like PHP unit, or let's say similar to PHP unit, you can also specify parameters, um, so or data providers, um, as as PHP unit would call them. So we can say provide consume, and these kind of work like a matrix. So you can um, you can sort of supply as many data providers as you like, and they'll be sort of interpolated. Um, to be honest, I haven't found a use for this yet, but maybe somebody will. Um, yeah, and you can, like PHP, you can re return a generator here um, if you really want to. Um, I think, and also it uses name parameters, so um, bar one equals one, I don't know, bar two equals two, and then you should, um, yeah, get the parameter here if we were going to say. Uh, da, 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 da. Unrecognized param provider, yeah, because it's plural for some reason. Um, and it doesn't have a method provide consume, it has provide consumer. Yeah, and then and then these values will be passed. Um, so, yeah, something to, to experiment with. Sorry, I don't understand it. Why are you passing arguments to consume? Consume is just a method that takes some time and that you want to benchmark. Exactly, exactly. So this is just if you need to pass something. Obviously, we don't need to. Um, but you could, for example, um, yeah, pass in time here, right? And then you could pass. I mean, yeah, I'm not sure you would do that. Oh, OK, nice. Um, but you could crash your program like that yeah anyway let's forget about that example because it's crashed horribly and i don't want to debug it um i think uh you had a you were missing a space between param and providers maybe I'm up in the doc block um, yeah Should there be a space there after the word pram? No, no, that's oh, just, okay. that's, okay. it's just a highlighting for some reason. 
Okay. Been... That, that was confusing. <laughs> that's what, that's why. Okay. Um, anyway, it, 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 it does work. Um, so then what else have we got? So I'm going to undo this anyway, because it's a bit messy. So now we've got um, a benchmark. What is this now? Too few arguments passed. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So now we've got a benchmark. Um, we can sort of explore some some other features of PHP Bench. Um, maybe starting with the progress logs. So these, yeah. So they're not that important. So I've just made a typo so you can sort of expose what's behind there. Um, the the interesting ones are the histogram, um, which will actually paint um, a little histogram <laughs> as you as you go through your through your benchmarks. Maybe we we'll make a few more here. And reduce the iterations, so it just force the iterations down a bit, so it gets a bit a bit faster. Um, obviously, we don't get very many. Yeah, so actually pretty pretty useful, uh, useless, sorry. I was gonna say useful, but it's not really that useful, um, but it's quite cool. Um, so you get a histogram in the, the CLI. And uh, the slightly more useful one is the Blinken uh, logger, which sort of paints um, the, the, the iterations as you go. Um, but more <laughs> useful is the, the way it integrates with the feature on, on PHP Bench called the retry threshold. So the, the re, if you remember from earlier, we said that, you know, like a, a relative standard deviation of 9.2 isn't really that great. You know, 0 0.2 is pretty, pretty fantastic. Um, so the retry threshold is a way to make the PHP Bench um, to, to, to help it reduce this. And the way it does that is after the it's sampled the, the number of iterations it should, it should have sampled, um, it checks to see which samples, if any, fell outside of a given threshold. Um, and then it will label those and it will rerun them again. And then it will recalculate the, 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 the mode for that, that set. And then if any of the samples again fall outside of that threshold, it runs it again. Um, and it might not be the same samples. Um, I'm not sure how it came up with this, but it kind of works. Um, probably my computer is worryingly stable at the moment. Um, so this is a very low threshold. So all of these are being rejected, but you can see, um, yeah, kind of how it works. So it's sort of rejecting them and then accepting them. Um, and in the end, you get a much tighter um, set of samples. And yeah, there's actually a bug in this report and it always says 0 0.2 so i'm going to switch to the, the one without the bug the old one um yeah but, but the, the, this really reduces the, the the relative standard deviation um so you, you generally get a much better um sample um okay so that's kind of enough with the features from php bench old um, so maybe some of the, the new features. Um, so first of all, we can we can um, you could do this in PHP um, the original uh, PHP range as well. But you can tag, um, you can store benchmarks. So if we, I'm going to reduce this so that it's a bit faster. Um, so we can tag this, and I'll remove that as well. Tag this as master. So the idea is that you're you're benchmarking a branch, your your feature branch. Um, and you want to check for regressions against master. So typically what you do is you switch your master branch, you'd run the benchmark on your, your master branch and tag it. So we tagged it as, as master. And now it's been stored. Um, and with PHP bench, you can, yeah, sort of recall that. You can, you can run reports in isolation. So we say ref is master. Um, and the report is expression, for example. Um, and also, PSU Bench 
collects information about your system when it runs the benchmark. So you can also produce an environment report, um, which tells you things like your system load when you run that benchmark, um, the Git branch you were on, the, the PHP version, if you had opcache enabled, if you've got xdebug enabled, things like that. Um, so that's kind of useful to be aware of. Um, but that's, that's not new. So the new thing is that we can now, when we run a benchmark, because one of the things that really annoyed me is it's really difficult to sort of see if you had a regression. Um, so now if you use, if you reference a benchmark, when you're running a benchmark, it will automatically compare against the reference. So now, so this is referencing master. Um, we see, yeah, this current run versus the um, older one, the master branch one. We didn't switch branches, but whatever. And we see a percent difference. So we see that um, for some reason, the second time run is 0.116% faster. And then this one was 0.032% slower. Um, so that's fine that, you know, that, 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 that they were the same speed basically. Um, and in the reports, you also get this, this information. Um, again, this is the old report. I'll switch to the new one um, because the new one is using the um, the expression language is using the the the, um, the AST nodes, and what that means is they can be kind of pretty printed. Um, so let's introduce some sort of performance regression. Um, yeah, maybe something stupid here. So make that a bit slower. Make that slower again, and make this one slower again and run that and the nice thing is um, now you get the sort of gradient um, so the color changes from zero percent which is white to 100 percent which is red and then um, sort of yeah green is minus 100 percent why was that slow Oh, okay, I did time consume twice, I should delete time consume. Yeah, much, um, much faster. So it's sort of green. Um, so that that's really, really good. Um, I mean, even even for me, that's sort of really sort of helping to, to reveal um, regressions when I'm looking at things. Um, but it won't help you automatically um, detect, detect regressions. And that's where we, we have the assertions. So um, we can say either for one or all, um, for, either for all, all, all subjects in this, in this benchmark or, or for individual ones, we can add an assertion. Um, so the, the expression language is growing, I guess. Um, I hope it's got most of what it needs now. Um, and yeah, the API might change it a little bit. Um, so basically it's got functions. So we say the mode and it will calculate the mode. And then we've got the data. Um, it's a little bit similar to the symphony um, syntax, I guess. Um, and then we have the variant and we have all the results. So PHP Bench can collect many different results. Um, and this is the time result. Uh, I say many different, by default, it just collects memory and time, but you could, write an extension to, to capture, I don't know, the xdebug profiling information if you wanted to. Um, so then we've got the, 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 the array, this average, it's an array of um, the average times from the, from the iterations. Um, and then we can also reference the baseline here. So we can say time average like this. Um, and you can see it's failed. And this is what happens when it fails. Um, it failed quite badly, actually. So one thing you, you may have noticed there is that I've said less than mode baseline, but in reality, if you run the benchmark twice, it's not going to, even if nothing's changed, it's not going to give exactly the right, um, the same result. So it could be slightly more, it could be slightly less. Um, so less than isn't really feasible and less than or equal is not really feasible either. So what we can do is we can add a tolerance here. We can say plus or minus uh, 10%. So it will tolerate um, 
the values and here you can see how it's working so we say plus or minus 10 percent this partially evaluated the times um so we can see that the the mode is this the the other the baseline mode is this and the the the, the um the tolerance is, is that um you may also notice we we don't have any time units here so the expression language also lets you specify um a time unit so you can say mode um average time as milliseconds um, mode average time as I don't know, microseconds or minutes, I think even days will work for whatever reason. Um, and then you get sort of better, um, better output for the time. Um, okay, that's, that's almost it from me. Um, just one last thing, well, there's a couple more things, I guess. Um, one thing that's really useful, which was kind of, um, it's been there for a while, but I find it really good. Is the the X if you've got X debug running? And I don't think. Okay, that's something old from my bash history. Um, yeah, if you've got X debug installed, then you will get the X debug uh, feature. Uh, so I just switched my version of PHP to one that actually has X debug. Um, yeah, and maybe make my com co code compatible with PHP 7.3. Um, yeah, there's the XDebug profile feature, which you can probably guess what it does. It will generate an XDebug profile. So it's going to launch that process, but configure it to capture an XDebug profile. Um, so you see that then it's, it's produced a profile for each of the benchmarks that we executed. And you can also pass the GUI option um, and that will automatically launch some, well, well it will launch K cache grind basically. Um, that, that's this, you can configure which one it launches, but yeah, that's the one it will launch by default. Um, and then of course you can, you can get all your profiling information and find out actually why your code is slow. Um, so while this might not be as good as Blackfire, um, it's certainly convenient to be able to do it offline. Um, and yeah, without any, sort of external third party service. Um, and it's gonna launch three of those. Um, yeah, there's there's documentation. The documentation has been, yeah, very um, upgraded, I guess. So yeah, slightly improved um, look. It's got the full um, annotation reference for all the annotations and attributes. And the nice thing is these uh, code samples are um, executed. So these are included from um, yeah, a directory and they're annotated in a special way. Um, and so these actually get executed in CI. So you can be pretty sure that all of this is um, working. All these examples work. Um, and the same for the expression language, the reference here all of these um, examples are evaluated. Um, yeah, and if and if they return false, it actually throws an error. So when it says that this equals 19, it really does equal 19. Um, yeah, so the documentation is not quite finished yet. Um, there's also stuff on like right, extending PSU bench if you want to do that. Um, yeah, in various different ways. Um, but yeah, hopefully that, that will be finished off for, for the 1.0. And that's, that's it. Yeah. Um, so there, there's a Twitter PHP bench, if you wanted to follow that and find out when 1.0 was actually released, um, there's obviously a GitHub and there's the, the documentation. Um, so yeah, if there are any questions, um, feel free to, to ask and if not, yeah, thanks. Cool. Thanks, Dan. Um, interesting you mentioned Parsica, because that's, I was watching one of Bo Simonson's streams with the Parsica team. And yeah, they were using, I uh, sort of still saw them using PHP Bench there as part of the uh, profiling work that they were doing. So I thought that was cool. Um, look on the screen there. Um, 
Yeah, I see. So you've not quite got to 1.0 yet. Is there anything that people can help out with? Uh, I see there's a 1.0 checklist issue and the easy pick <laughs> label. I mean, is there anything that you might want some help oh, with it's, if it's... anybody wants to pitch in? Yeah, I, I guess there, there could be. I mean, it, the, the problem really is it's like how long is a piece of string? So I keep finding things um, that, I mean, there's lots in there that I really wanted to, to remove and or at least refactor. So if I were to do PHP Bench again, I'd do it in a, in a very different way. Um, so there's lots of things which I'd like to change and I would change if, yeah, if it made sense, if I, could, if I had the time and the sort of motivation to do it. Um, so it's, it's kind of tricky because I don't really know at what point <laughs> it's going to be finished. I'm doing a, an in, this PHP release for radar um, interview in, in May 12th, I think. Um, and I wanted to use that as an excuse to sort of try and push this to, to at least to, to 1.0 version. Um, I mean, it's, it's almost there. I, think. I mean, I think if anybody would help out, it'd be just if you were using PHP Bench, you know, use the alpha version and you know, give, give feedback on that um, with any bugs you might find or any improvements you can, you can think of. But yeah, the, at this stage, you know, the, the best contribution really is feedback. And, you know, if you, if you want PHP Bench to do something or you, do, you don't think that it's doing something particularly well, um, or if you have an idea of what, you know, what, what would be useful, what small changes there might be to make, or, you know, even just reading the documentation and fixing that. So two things from Mike. One says, release today, if it breaks, that's what 1.0.1 is for. <laughs> so yeah. I'm not sure if that's been too <laughs> uh, Exactly, he also, yeah. He also has a question. Uh, where does it store benchmark data between runs? I see if it's file system files or yeah. Files uh, yeah by default it will create a dot php bench folder and it will store the artifacts in that um so yeah it's the sort of thing you can configure it to, to be somewhere else um but in general um you just add that to your git ignore file awesome uh Mike also says, nice and was to share between runs and CI. I'm not sure what, <laughs> I understand those words. I think there's Sorry. a word missing or something there. Like. <laughs> I had definitely a word missing. So like, I meant like nice and easy to share between like GitHub runs. So like, if I want to compare my master and whatever, it's doable. I'm so sorry, I butchered that so badly. <laughs> no press return and you cannot edit it. Yeah, uh, and that that's really the, the um, what do you call it? Um, that that would be the best the best thing having the CI having PHP running the CI and capturing performance regressions and it, I had it working quite well on Travis, um, but funnily enough when I when I tried on GitHub Actions I tried a couple of different strategies. The first strategy I did was to spin up two two actions, um, and yeah, really run run the two things concurrently on one on master one on the the new branch. And then publish the artifacts and then sort of produce the report but they were so different like the results were not comparable at all so i don't know how that that's working the second approach i tried to get help actions was to use the same action so checking out the master branch recording the the run and then checking out the new branch in the same sort of container and then um getting getting running the assertions and that works better um, but yeah, it's, and, I, and I'm using, um, the, the, this for regression test and it's, it's definitely helped a few times. Um, but yeah, the, the challenge is always, um, yeah, the, how busy GitHub Actions is or how busy, um, Travis is because, you know, they're not stable platforms in, in, in performance. Um, respect. I guess under the hood, they're like, temp they're technically like shared servers because it's just, uh. Like loads of stuff running on some random server somewhere while it's got capacity and then moving on. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so that, that's definitely tricky. Um, maybe it's better if you've got like a private CI system, but it is still doable. Um, if you, you know, if you, especially if you've got big, um, fat tests, um, you know, you're testing something for, for seconds rather than, um, microseconds, 
um, then it's still doable. And you, the tolerance helps a lot. So, you know, if you tolerate something for 10% either way, um, that's generally good enough to account for any variance in, in the CI system. Um, whilst also like protecting you against, yeah, big uh, performance regressions, but it might not catch sort of minor ones, I guess. Yeah, I think the GitHub, yeah, I know I mentioned that when Ryan did his GitHub actions talk <laughs> for us a few months ago, we, we had some issues with GitHub uh, going down. So it, it does happen time to time, maybe more so recently with everything else going on. Um, you yeah. were talking about regressions there. Um, is there a way to fail? Like if it goes below a certain threshold, like fail the CI? If what do you mean um if if the if the assertion fails or yeah i guess that's what I, I i didn't i didn't catch that maybe so um yeah if if your benchmarks go below maybe like previous thresholds or something like that yep. is there a way to make that okay yeah exactly so that, that's exactly what the assertions do um, so you're comparing against the, the previous benchmark, um, and you, you specify the tolerance. Um, but yeah, if the assertion fails, pH eventual exit with, yeah, a non-zero status. I'm not sure exactly what it is. One probably, or maybe two. <laughs> I need to figure out how to get that working, I guess. I, um, <laughs> Marco, um, uh, let's see added PHP bench to my UUID library. And I, uh, one of the reasons why I'm uh, sitting here is because I, I, I haven't used it myself, so I didn't know how to use it. <laughs> I figured I needed to know how to use it uh, <laughs> since it's there in my own library. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it'd be, I mean, I think Parsica have just start, started to try, I'm not sure how successful they are, so to get it, um, to get the regression testing working in GitHub Actions. And I've been more or less successfully doing it with, with Factor um, in some cases as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's dependent on GitHub Actions, how effective it is basically, but right. even if it's relatively unstable, you can still give it you know, a, a generous tolerance um, so that at least you catch like ridiculous um, performance regressions. Yeah, and there, yeah. there are thousands of use cases. Let's say I have a stock import running every 15 minutes and it should not be take longer than seven minutes. And whenever whoever pushes code into this stock import, long, it shouldn't be longer than seven minutes. So, and if I have in my GitHub page and I, I have the, the command, the PHP bench command, but how would I compare it to master? I don't get it. Yeah, I, I guess, um, yeah, you, generally you wouldn't run something on like a benchmark that takes seven minutes um, because, yeah, it's still, it would slow down your, your CI process. Right? <laughs> um, but you could, you know, if you've got a stock import, it's stock export or something, you, you'd yeah, make more like an relevant. integration test. Yeah. And you, you um, yeah, just test it with like five stocks instead of like 5,000. And you still pick up that that difference if somebody um, made it made it worse. Okay, but still, I I run PHP vendor bin PHP bench run. And how would I uh, specify that it should compare to the master uh, code? So what you need to do um, is you'd need to check out the master branch, and then you'd have to tag you'd have to run the benchmarks and tag them with something, for example, master. Um, and that will restore the results. And then you'd switch back to um, your branch and then you'd run them again, but referencing. Um, so you've got two, two options, basically tag and ref um, and tag will tag. Yeah, it will store it and give it a tag. And then ref will refer to the previous one. And then, yeah, automatically compare it. And if you've got assertions um, and you use the baseline in the assertions, it will 
it will take that. Yeah, the the ref becomes the baseline um, that that you're using. If that makes sense. I don't want to check out into the master. I want to just push my code and and see if it is uh, behaving similarly to the master code. Yeah, and, and typically if, if you're using CI, that's what you do as well. You just push your code and then it will check out master and do all the other stuff it needs to do on the CI server. So, um, but yeah, if you're developing locally, you, you need to check out master and run the tests. I know, that's fine. Of, I just push it. Yeah. That's fine. The CI should tell me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's CI's job, isn't it? <laughs> Let's just push things and see what happens. Any other questions from anybody? Okay, in that case, um, so we've got the uh, PHP Bench Twitter account, Dan. So I guess if anybody's got any more questions, they can send you a, a tweet or open a GitHub issue or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if, if, if you are using Future Bench, um, feel free to just tag me in. Um, yeah. In GitHub. Um, I'm happy to, to, to help out. 